I'm Wayne Novelli, I'm the business lead for Active Leakage Control at Affinity Water. Wayne, thanks ever so much for talking to the Affinity Water podcast series today. We're discussing the hot topic of leaks. If we're asking customers to save water, they often raise the issue of why there are so many leaks on our systems. You're Mr Leakage for Affinity Water. We're in the middle of Hatfield where you can hear the traffic noise is quite loud. So why are we recording this podcast here? I'm hoping that I can give you some understanding of some of the challenges that we face uh, when we try to find uh, locate leaks. And it's very noisy often? Yes, our mains are in the highways and the public footpaths obviously because they're providing water to our customers so inevitably we are working in noisy areas. And that makes the leaks harder to detect? Yes, so a leak noise is generated by the water forcing its way through the hole in the pipe so that creates friction that creates noise and we survey and listen for those noises on the mains network and that's what helps us narrow down an area of interest and ultimately find where the leak is. So a lorry going by like it did just now and making the ground shudder that really doesn't make your job easy. Absolutely. So the the equipment we use is so sensitive. You'll hear people walking past, you'll hear the footsteps, even the weather, wind and rain, all of those things. Aeroplanes, trains, schools uh, in the summer, people mowing their lawns, cutting hedges. Everything impacts our detection capability. Now, people might be surprised to learn that AI hasn't solved the problem of detecting leaks. Historically, you do train people and how to listen for leaks. They're called leak loggers, I believe. Yeah, so traditionally leaks were found by technicians that would listen using simple device, a, a metal rod or a wooden rod, we call a listening stick, and they would listen to all the stop taps and valves. As the years went on, electronic equipment was created which would then help you localise the leak by calculating the the time distance the sound was travelling from the the source of the leak to the sensors and various technology has moved on from that. So what we're trying to do, because we're so aware of the issues we have with the, the ambient noise, we're trying to find ways of finding leaks that aren't reliant on acoustics. So you're absolutely right, AI is one of those things and water companies are trying to build digital networks now so you have a a network, uh, a digital network that replicates your real network so you can start to understand where you have changes in pressures that can help you identify where you may have pockets of leakage. So that's something we've been working on over the last couple of years and we've, we've built a situational awareness tool that is still in its very early stages of development but it does help us narrow down an area when we have a problem. So, so it, it makes our surveying more efficient and it means that even if we are dependent on acoustic tools, we know that we need to be focusing our time and effort in that particular area. Now, water companies are given goals by Ofwat in terms of leakage. How is Affinity Water comparing now to previous years? So we have committed to reducing our leakage by 20% from 2020 to 2025 and we're currently on track to deliver that target. We've invested heavily in training, equipment, we took on apprentices last year so we're we're really investing in our future and as I say we're looking at all the smart technologies, the AI, we do a lot of work with suppliers, we collaborate with other water companies so we can all understand and and establish best practice. So we're we're certainly performing better than we have historically. Uh, It's a long journey but it's, it's a very positive one and it's one that you you tend to find that people that that get into leak detection stay in leak detection for a long time because it is challenging but it is engaging and we all feel that we're doing something good. And as you said Affinity Water has failed some of its leakage targets in the past. I believe you're halfway there to achieving your future leakage targets already. That's correct yeah so we we set ourselves a, a very challenging target to achieve most of the reduction in the first part of the the amp period and so we, we've pretty much done that and so that means that the, the next couple of years 
puts us in a very strong position going forward. So as you mentioned, people might not have thought that you could do an apprenticeship in leakage. How new is that? Well, it's certainly new for us. I'm not sure if it's been done elsewhere in the industry, but uh, it was something I was keen to look into a couple of years ago. So I spoke to our head of L&D and we worked very closely together alongside in collaboration with our community operations department. We found some training providers that ran a course for water network technicians. They're not specifically trained to do leakage. They get a broad understanding of the water industry and we then train them to do the leak detection out on site. So what we end up with 18 months later is, is someone that's new to the industry with a good understanding which helps them understand the, the broader picture of why they're doing detection and the benefits and so forth. But what we're looking for is, is people that are, are going to have a, a, a long career in the industry. But it means that we can get people in, we can train them on our network and we actually employed these apprentices based on their principles so we looked for people whose principles were aligned with Affinity's principles and therefore they were a very good fit into the business, they fit into the teams and it's been really successful and we're hoping that we'll do that too again in the future. So like I say we, we, we tend to find that it's a job that people enjoy because there's such a, a variety to it. There's there's some data-driven stuff and there's a lot of field-based work as well. So there's a nice variety of work. Now, as I mentioned, customers and the public get hot under the collar about leakage. We're asking them to take part in save our streams, a behavioural change campaign to save water in their daily usage in their homes. But do people understand how difficult it is to detect leaks and how to repair what are often Victorian networks of pipes? I mean, they were lead at one time. I believe pipes are now plastic, but the technology is changing. Yeah, Again, historically, leak detection was all focused on acoustics, which works well on metallic pipe. It doesn't work well on plastic pipe. So one of the things that you do to improve leakage is try and prevent leakage. So you repair the or you replace the old mains and you put new mains in the ground that are less likely to leak. But that then impedes your ability to actually do leak detection, hence why the industry is looking for alternative methods. We have got equipment that works on, on plastic pipe and that's improving all the time. There's a, a number of, of reasons why pipes leak and it isn't just the age of the pipe. A lot of it is the actual ground material, so different soil types corrode the mains. But a lot of it is ground movement, so the weather has a big impact. We've just come through a very dry summer. The ground moves and it pulls the pipes, it, it twists the pipes and so forth. So a, a lot of the leakage is caused by ground movement and that can be through traffic vibration as well. It, yeah, it's, it's not just the age of the pipe, so replacing the pipe isn't necessarily the solution. Now, we're both, as I said, standing in the middle of the Hatfield, lots of traffic, but also our hands in our pockets because it's cold, and the cold snap might actually lead to more leaks. Yeah, it absolutely does. So, th th again, there's a number of things that cause the leaks in the cold weather. Primarily, it is ground movement. So, if you see big swings in temperature during the day and overnight, that causes ground movement. Um, and even the actual temperature of the water can have an impact. Winter is a time when we see an increase in bursts. I'm very proud to say we're actually very good at picking up bursts quickly and, and finding them. So we have flow data which we can download every 15 minutes. So we can see changes on the network very quickly. Burst mains are reasonably straightforward to find. So winter it's just a case of being prepared and, and making sure that all the other departments that we work alongside so the repair teams and so on are, are all set up and, and ready to go at, at very short notice and as you said this data getting it back to base quicker continually monitoring it including at night someone you might spot if if an area's usage is greater than it normally would be at night or in daytime and then you can say ah perhaps we've got a leak but you have divided areas into what are called DMAs in the business. What's a DMA? So a DMA is a district meter area. To try and help you picture that, if you, if you think of a thousand piece puzzle, each piece of the puzzle is a district meter area. It's an area where we can measure the water that we put in 
and we can measure how much comes out the other end. We know how many customers we have in there and therefore we can identify is the water that comes out the area as much as we think it should be. And as I say, the flow data, we, we can see the flow patterns. So from that, we can do some analysis and it helps us identify where we think we're seeing a, a trend that would suggest there's a leak. You know, this time of year, when you get the cold snap, you get a sudden burst, that's a very, very noticeable change in flow. And this is where I mentioned earlier the situational awareness tool and all the artificial intelligence, that's where that's really starting to play a part now because that means that we can pretty much narrow down our area of interest to two or three streets rather than the entire DMA. Remember as well, the team that I run, we're looking for non-visible leakage. So this isn't the sort of stuff that our customers see and call in. This is the underground leaks that, that aren't showing. So having that ability to know that you should be focusing your surveys in, in a small area is so powerful. It helps us be so much more efficient. It helps us find the leaks quicker and therefore repair the leaks quicker, therefore reduce leakage. Well, one thing that you haven't mentioned, I know because you had a, a chat beforehand, but I've never heard of this hydro tech. That's because you've got plastic pipes, isn't it? Hydrophones. Yeah. Hydrophones. Hydrophones, yeah. So there's two different devices for listening. One is a accelerometer, which is listening to the wall of the pipe, and then a hydrophone is listening through the water. So I mentioned earlier, plastic pipes are difficult to detect leaks on because the sound doesn't travel through the plastic. So when you use a hydrophone, you're listening through the water. So hydrophones work very well. And as the technology has improved over the years, we've improved the ways of being able to use the equipment on the network so it's important that the hydrophone has a good connection and has a good seal and that's what we've worked on to improve over the years with the supplier so we now have small pockets where we have fixed network loggers in plastic areas so they basically record sound every night they send information into a database that runs correlations between those loggers and will tell us I think there's something here and it actually gives us a point of interest. We can actually send a technician to a point to confirm whether there is something there or not. And that's without a customer or the member of the public phoning in? Absolutely, yeah. And Affinity Water has made a significant investment in this new leakage technology, but does it mean you're going to meet your goals faster? Yeah, it certainly does, because if we can narrow down where we send our technicians, it, it means that we'll find the leaks quicker. There's a lot of research at the moment in trying to understand how networks behave. Yeah, the, the big thing is becoming better at preventing leakage in the first place. We've got more and more tools that make us aware when there's a problem and can then narrow down that, that area of interest and the equipment to enable us to locate the leaks is improving and, and then obviously it, it comes down to being able to fix them. And the public might think in terms of a Eureka magic bullet. We've talked about all this new technology, AI included, but it seems to me that you're using new systems hand in hand with the old leak loggers and listening for leaks. Is there a magic bullet? No. So if there is a magic solution, it's using a combination of things and it's understanding what that process should be and in which order you use those various bits of technology. So there is certain equipment that is designed to work better in certain conditions. At the moment, I still personally believe that you need a good, strong foundation and ability to use the basic tools because all the clever stuff that's out there you still need somebody to actually put a mark on the floor and say that's where I need you to dig and that arguably is the, the missing bit at the moment and I don't know if uh, you know short of camera technology in the mains you know I, I don't know what the ways forward are with that but certainly and this is what we've done with the apprentices we've we've made sure that they've got those real basic detection skills and then all the clever stuff you can use on top is, is a bonus well wayne as you say it's a highly skilled job you're offering apprenticeships including in leakage too let's just walk to the road get up take our hands out of our pockets and and if we walk along here you just mentioned putting a circle in the middle of the road. It's a busy road in Hatfield city centre, as we said. But, but how would you go about discovering a leak in this road? Let's just look at it. 
So there's a number of ways of doing it. If, if we had fixed network loggers that were recording overnight, then they would pick up noise when there's a leak and we would then send a technician out to use a, a similar type of equipment, but something that will actually give you a live reading. And then the next thing is to establish exactly where the line of your main is. And then we need to actually listen to the surface. So we do that with the old traditional listening sticks and with ground microphones. But what we're listening for is the leak noise coming up through the, through the road surface. And then we do a whole number of checks around. We make sure that there aren't any pipe connections coming off of that because where the source of the noise is is not necessarily where the leak is. So there's a whole number of checks we go through, a whole load of processes. And then, yeah, it's a case that somebody would be confident that that's where we should be digging and then you raise the job up and then it gets handed over to our colleagues that then arrange for the excavations. And the traffic management. And the traffic management, absolutely. And sometimes we have to liaise with the other utilities because there's a lot of other pipe work in the ground. You've got gas pipes, electric, cable. And, and there are times when we, we actually need them to come and move something so that we can actually get to our main. Well, look, Wayne, thanks ever so much for talking to the Affinity Water podcast series today. I certainly know a lot more about leakage detection, and, and I hope our customers do too. But just finally, why do you enjoy the job, Mr Leakage at Affinity Water? You know, it's not a role that everybody would want to take on. No, so it's something that I started doing in the late 1990s. When the industry became privatised, there was suddenly a need to do leak detection. I got into it actually because of somebody that I knew that did it, and they kept telling me, you know, they were talking about it, I thought it was interesting, and, and that's actually what got me, me started. I always said I wanted to do something that, that adds value, and uh, reducing leakage, saving water, to me was always important and obviously as the years have gone on it's become more and more important environmentally absolutely environmentally and there's still so much to learn there's still much to progress so as my career has moved on I've got more involved trying to understand and, and find solutions for the future I've been doing this since 1997 I can still learn something every day. And that's what I always say, you know, when we bring on new people, when we bring in the apprentices, I always say to them, you will learn something every day. And that's a great feeling, going home at the end of the day, knowing that you've done something that's made a difference, but knowing that you're part of improving the future. Wayne Novelli, what a lovely place to end this podcast on. Thank you so much for talking to the Affinity of Water podcast series today, looking at leakage. I certainly think about it very differently now. Thank you, Bonnie.